Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing, and today we'll continue with our major series about Chinese Kung Fu. China can boast probably the longest and most varied martial arts tradition in the world. In today's program, we'll be hearing all about one of the most important martial arts disciplines in China, Wu Dang Kung Fu, better known as Nei Jia Boxing. The name comes from the Wudang Mountains in Hubei province. Besides Kung Fu, Wudang is also known for the many Taoist monasteries in the area. For many centuries, a mysterious relationship has existed between Taoism and Wudang Kung Fu. Among practitioners of Chinese Kung Fu, Shaolin Kung Fu in the north and Wudang Kung Fu in the south enjoy equal fame. Shaolin Kung Fu emphasizes speed and force, while Wudang Kung Fu is based on a more recent style called Nei Jia Boxing, which teaches its practitioners to meet a rival's motion with stillness and a forceful blow with a softer tactic. Nei Jia Boxing exerted a major influence on later generations, giving birth to such famous styles as Tai Ji, Form and Will, and the eight trigram palm styles. But when did this magical type of Kung Fu known as Nei Jia first appear? And who was its founder? When Zhu Di, or Emperor Changzu of the Ming Dynasty, began building the Forbidden City in Beijing in the year 1416, Another project of equal importance to the emperor was underway in China's south, the building of a magnificent Taoist temple. The temple under construction was more than a thousand kilometers from Beijing on top of Mount Wudang. The emperor named his new temple Taiyue Taiyue Palace. Construction of the temple began three years earlier than the Forbidden City, and no less than 300,000 craftsmen and skilled workers were recruited for the project. In terms of time, it would turn out to be the longest construction project undertaken in the Ming Dynasty, taking more than 10 years to complete. When the work was finished, there would be a new saying used to refer to the greatest places of importance, the Forbidden City in the north and Wudang Palace in the south. Why did this mountain hold such an important position in the Emperor's heart? And why did he want to build this magnificent palace on this particular mountain? People are divided as to the Emperor's motivation, but one version, albeit rather less known to the general public, is related to a secret held by the mountain. Even today on Mount Wudang, one can see a much older palace called Yu Jen, which means meeting a sage, and there is a mysterious story behind this palace. From Zhu Yuanzhang, the founder of the Ming Dynasty, all the way down to Emperor Zhu Di, emperors of several generations had searched here for a man who had obtained the highest status of spiritual enlightenment, believing that he lived on Mount Wudang. It is said that by building a magnificent palace for the legendary sage, the Emperor hoped to lure him out of his life of seclusion and encourage him to make his way to the capital where he could help the Emperor rule the country. This mysterious man was Zhang Sanfeng, a great Taoist. But by the time of Emperor Zhu Di, the sage had still not been found. Even four edicts from Emperor Zhu Di himself had failed to lure the Taoist to the capital, and he was nowhere to be seen. 
With little idea what to do next, the Emperor decided to have Yu Jen Palace built on top of the mountain, which he knew to be the place where the Taoist had meditated for spiritual enlightenment. By doing so, the Emperor hoped to soften the Taoist's refusal to meet with him. It is only natural to wonder just why it was this Taoist was held in such high regard. Did he perhaps possess some skills with magic? This is a portrait printed during the Ming Dynasty era. According to Ming Dynasty stories of magic people, Zhang Sanfeng had a very uncanny appearance. His build was said to resemble a turtle, his bones a crane. He had huge ears, bull-like eyes, while the strands of hair on his head and in his beard were as hard as iron needles and stood up on end. He was only ever seen in just one shirt throughout the entire year, and he could consume a mountainous quantity of food in a single meal or refrain entirely from food for several months in a row. It was said every line he had ever read was burned into his memory, but unfortunately, his whereabouts were quite unpredictable. Over time, it came to be believed he was the indisputable founder of Neijia Boxing. Legend has it that while working on gaining enlightenment on Mount Wudang, he developed Neijia Boxing according to the Taoist principle of yin and yang, after studying the moves of stars and the appearance of mountains and rivers. The aim of Neijia Boxing was to build up one's spiritual, physical, internal and external health, and it shared with Shaolin Kung Fu, the highest status in the world of Kung Fu. Thus, there were two truly great schools of Kung Fu, one in the north, the other in the south. But oddly, in official records, Zhang Sanfeng is only referred to as a sage who attained supreme spiritual enlightenment. Nothing is mentioned about his legendary contribution to Neijia Boxing. For this reason, some people question the commonly held belief that it was he who initiated the style. For if he did, why is there no mention of it in any historical records? <咳>说这个武当丹士的长三峰 他是隐着的事情，尤其作为道士，他是修炼家，是修炼修道的人。修道的人他不以这个来扬名，更不拿这个来去跟人这个叫什么主动的跟人去征勇斗狠，是吧？现在我们传下来说，张三丰有一句这
就是从古代历来是，在中原这块地方的人民的体质是比较弱的，所以他他要发展的话，是吧？无论从防御外敌，是吧？或者是自身发展，他都必须要解决一个在古代那个冷兵器的时候呢，要解决这个以弱胜强。以这个比较弱的这个体制呢，要战胜那个北方的一些个强悍的民族的这么一个问题，啊，这个问题呢就深刻的这个影响了中国这个个体积极术，就这个武术的发展。At this time, when Chinese kung fu was awaiting a theoretical revolution, people became aware of the theory of Nei boxing. This style was said to have been created by Zhang Sanfeng, a superb kung fu master, also said to have been very well versed in Shaolin kung fu and other martial arts schools, due to his extensive travels and meetings with other kung fu masters. He had, it was said, returned to Mount Wudang to meditate on how to subdue a stronger rival. Then one day, an incident had delivered the answer to him, counteracting hard tactics with soft tactics.他这个创造的武当内家拳呢，一般的人认为它是关这个喜鹊和蛇在那里相斗。完后他来受到启发，那么就是这个启发的最重要一点就是以柔克刚。这个蛇有个特点，既手则则尾硬，既尾则手硬